Here's another example of using L'Hopital's rule. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the example limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of the quantity 1 over x raised to the x power. Okay, So this whole thing there is inside the limits. OK, so now the first thing we always want to do is try a direct substitution. So when we do that, well, what happens? Well, if we look at 1 over x, as x goes to 0 from the positive side, 1 over x goes to 1 over 0 from the positive side. So 1 over 0 from the positive side, that's going to go to positive infinity. Okay, And here in the exponent, what we have is x going to 0 from the positive side. So really, this whole thing is pretty much positive infinity raised to the 0. And that's that makes us kind of sad face, because that's one of our indeterminate forms. But because of that, that actually makes us kind of happy face. Okay because since it's an indeterminate form, that means we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now, we can't use L'Hopital's rule directly because we didn't get the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Okay, uh, If we get one of these forms, we can apply L'Hopital's rule directly, but we got this form instead. So we can do some manipulations to eventually get to these forms here. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll try some algebraic manipulations and see how we can get something in this form here. Okay, so this is actually going to be pretty similar to the previous video uh, where we had that other example with the exponential type function. So if we have something in an exponent with an x and something down here with an x and we have to do L'Hopital's rule, um, or we, it's a limit we have to evaluate, then we have to use L'Hopital's rule eventually. But getting there is pretty much going to be the same kind of process. So remember in the previous video, we used that rule that we know from pre-calculus for logarithms that says if we have e to natural log of some thing, then that's just the same thing as that thing, because the e and the natural log more or less cancel each other out. So we used that rule, but we used it going backwards. So that was kind of the weird part. We used that going backwards. So we're going to do that exact same thing again, actually. And in this example, we're going to say, OK, let me take a look at 1 over x to the x. OK, so this here is going to be my m. This is going to be my m in this expression here. OK, so this equals e to the natural log of 1 over x to the x. okay, And that whole thing is inside the natural log there. So how does that help us? Well, now, remember that uh, rule for logarithms that says if we have natural log of, let's say, a to the b, then we can pull out that exponent and write it as a factor. So we're going to do that here. So here, what do we have? In our case, we have natural log of 1 over x all raised to the x. So we can pull out that exponent, that x here, and write that as a factor. So that's x times the natural log of 1 over x. OK, so we're going to do that. And this is what we get. e to the x times the natural log of 1 over x. OK? So if you've seen the previous video, uh, you may notice that this is starting to look pretty familiar. We're sort of following the same pattern here. So let's go ahead and clear some space to work. Get rid of that. All right, so now if we come back over here, so switch colors to limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of 1 over x to the x. Okay, This is going to equal the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of, well, 1 over x to the x, we just found out that that equals this expression here. Okay, So this equals the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of e to the x times the natural log of 1 over x. Okay. Now, actually, before we continue, there is one more thing I'd like to do. Uh, natural log of 1 over x, this is actually equal to negative natural log of x. And there are a couple different ways to show that. Uh, I'll do it just one way here. So natural log of, let's say, big A over big B, that's equal to natural log of big A minus natural log of big B. Well, here we have natural log of 1 over x. So that's going to equal natural log of 1 minus natural log of x. OK, but natural log of 1 is just 0, right? So remember that from pre-calculus, natural log of 1 is 0. So this equals 0 minus natural log of x, or in other words, just negative natural log of x. So that's where this comes from here. So in other words, again, natural log of 1 over x equals negative natural log of x. OK, so let's go ahead and get rid of some of this here. OK, now I'm going to use that fact to simplify this just ever so slightly, a little bit more. So this equals the limits as x goes to 0 from the positive side of e 
to the negative x times the natural log of x. Okay, so here, remember x, we had x times natural log of 1 over x. Uh, natural log of 1 over x is negative natural log of x. So this simplifies to negative x times the natural log of x. So that's where this comes from right here. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing that we did in the previous video. So remember uh, that property of limits that we learned way back when, when we first started talking about limits, or what you first learned about those in your courses. Um, limits can be pushed in and pulled out of continuous functions. And this right here, this let's circle it a little better e to the negative x natural log of x, that's continuous, that's a continuous function. So we can take this limit and push it inside of the exponent here. So let's go ahead and do that. So then we get uh, e to the limit as x goes to zero from the positive side of negative x natural log of x, okay? Now I'm gonna need to clear some space over here. Now, does this look familiar? Hopefully it does, if you saw the previous video anyway. So if you saw the previous video, we actually ended up with something just like this, but without the minus sign. So if we continue with this, this equals e. So this minus sign right here represents a factor of negative 1, so we can pull it out of the limit. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be e to the negative limits as x goes to 0 from the positive side of x times the natural log of x. Okay, And this limit right here, we circle that in a different color. This limit right here, we've actually done this a couple videos ago. I think it was example four. We actually did this, and this uh, equals zero. So because it is kind of involved, I don't want to go through the details again uh, in this video. But basically, the point is, if we try to evaluate this by direct substitution, we're going to get zero times negative infinity, which is one of the indeterminate forms. So we can do some algebraic manipulations on this to get zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Um, I think it was infinity over infinity that we get. Yeah, we do some algebraic manipulations on this to get infinity over infinity. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. And then when we use L'Hopital's rule, go through all the steps, we eventually end up with um, the result that this limit is zero. So this limit is zero. So going back to the original problem then, this becomes, uh, this equals e to the negative zero. Okay, because again, this whole limit is zero. So this is e to the negative 0, but negative 0 is just 0, so that's e to the 0, and we get 1. Okay, so again, there are some details that we skipped over, but they were covered in previous videos, and because they are about 6-7 minutes worth of details, I don't want to go through them all again a couple of videos later. So just in the interest of saving time, uh, if you haven't watched those videos, and if, or that video, example 4, I believe it is, uh, I do refer you to that video if you'd like to see the details of how to evaluate this limit here. So anyway... And notice this trick here with this uh, e, we used that in the previous video, example 5, I believe. Um, pretty much the exact same trick. We just use that property that e to the natural log of m equals m, but we use that going backwards. Okay? And that's, sort of the, that's always the trick you want to use when you have a problem like this, and you have to use L'Hopital's rule. That's the trick that you're going to want to use. So anyway, what we just found out was the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of 1 over x to the x equals 1. And that's a, one more example of using L'Hopital's rule.